everyone a very good morning to all of you myself neha gupta your mentor for karta today's class will be begin by a surprise for all of you yes i have a surprise and that surprise is coming soon on 11 december 2022 so what happened is that we were getting specific queries related to a course and after doing research on the queries we have come up with a solution and what is the solution and what was the problem in the first place all of this you would know on this date so you have to wait for it we are going to make an announcement soon on 11 december 2022 <clears throat> now you want to know about it for that you need to stay tuned to our channel so stay tuned so that you get the updates now this is the timetable for rbi sabi and abad i hope you are aware of it and also about our application so let's begin with the question number 1 which edition of the kathaka was held in new delhi to showcase amazing stories and music by indian and international storytellers in their pristine physical form from six countries along with india so basically which edition of this kathaka was held this is the question so guys the right answer is 15th edition first of all i will be telling you what are the things that you need to pick out from this news and then i will tell you the details of this news okay so firstly you have to pick up the edition then you have to learn the place where this was held then you have to learn about the countries which participated in this event okay so basically this kathakar event was a cultural event wherein all the participants from these countries and the participants from india participated and they presented the story okay so it is a kind of cultural event uh you all have known about it so kathaka even now i remember that kathak the dance form has also originated from the very basic idea of telling the story kathak is telling the story so that is the uh, that is one of the physical forms in which you tell a story so here many artists came they presented the stories they tell the stories in their own manners so this is not important for you to remember in the first place the Things that I have told you, they those are the only important things. Okay, especially the countries. Okay, because this is a medium through which India has connected with its neighbors and the other countries in the world. Okay, so question number two is, which is the first Indian feature film in the history of Indian cinema to have a star cast comprising only. indigenous tribal people so here in my opinion this question is a very important question first of all such type of news is not very rampantly available okay you have to dig deeper in order to uh, find such kind of news okay it was not there in many news channels in many competitive exams websites because i have searched all of them secondly such type of questions are asked because it is india's first movie that has the tribal in it acting the entire cast was tribal people okay so now which movie are we talking about movie is the bari kuruvi okay so naam se hi lag raha hai that it is not a hindi movie obviously bollywood is now on its the lower side so we cannot expect bollywood to do much at this point of time we may never know what is going to unravel in the future now coming back to the news so this dabari kuruvi it is guys first of all the tribal movie in the history of indian cinema second uh, i would say special feature of this movie is that it is shot in the tribal language entirely okay so it is a tribal language movie as well so we may not understand it if we don't have the subtitles now the third fact is that it is going to premiere in the india international film festival okay so these are some of the facts related to this movie now let's have a look at the tribals which participated in the movie because that is important so irula muduka kurumba and vaduka tribal communities of attapaddi theek hai which is a tribal hamlet in kerala participated in the movie okay so the cast comes from these many tribal communities which belong to this region of kerala 
I have already explained to you that this movie is shot in the tribal language. So which tribal language? It is Irula. Okay. This is guys important fact because this is again India's first tribal. We saw language be important here. Irula is a tribal language which is spoken by the Irula tribal community which resides in Kerala. So here in this one sentence, you can expect a question. You can make a question out of it. So in which state is the Irula community reside? That can be a question. So you have to keep your eyes and mind open for any kind of potential question. So I have already told you that it will, it was premiered during the India International Film Festival in Goa. Question number three. Recently, the International Crop Research Institute for the semi-arid tropics scientists in collaboration with the Asian Development Bank have developed high-resolution spatial maps of croplands, where is the headquarters of ICRISAT. So here, the question is completely flipped. You were expecting, I guess, a question out of the news, but the question is asking you about the headquarters of the organization. Okay. So background information is also important as far as the organizations are concerned. If those organizations are of importance, okay. Suppose if it is about a very unknown organization, you don't have to know about it because it is unknown in itself, okay. Like public affairs index is released by a small think tank in Bangalore. So you need not to memorize about the background of that think tank because that would not be asked. But this organization holds importance. Now coming to the question, what, where is the headquarters? So headquarters is Hyderabad, okay, in Telangana. So guys, first of all, in 1972, ICRISAT was established. And in 2022, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of this organization. Now, ICRISAT and Asian Development Bank, they both have developed the high resolution spatial maps of the croplands. What is the use of it? First use it that policy makers would get an accurate picture of the cropland of the cultivated land so they can frame the policies accordingly. Second use is for the farmers. Because farmers in case of any damage to the crop they need to pre uh, present and empirical evidence of the crop loss or if they want to claim any insurance against that loss they need data now these maps are going to provide that empirical data to the farmer so that they can present it to the insurance company so that is also a benefit to the farmers okay now we have certain knowledge nuggets as well. I already told you the importance of the organization. So let's read something about it as well. So it is the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics. Okay. So the basic idea of this organization is hidden in its name itself. It aims to work in the agriculture sector. Okay. Research, uh, it aims to do research in the agriculture sector so that the semi-arid tropical regions can also be revived and can also be made green, okay? So it is a non-profit, non-political organization. It conducts agricultural research for the development in the dry lands of Asia and sub-Saharan Africa, okay? So the underlying points are the highlighted points. So do pay attention to such pointers. Now it was established in 1972. Ikrisat is headquartered in Hyderabad, I have already told you. So the main office is in India and it has its regional office or branches. So it has two regional hubs in Nairobi and Bamako, which is in Mali. And country offices are located in Niger, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Ethiopia and Mozambique. Now, your question is, I guess, whether you need to remember this data as well. So, in my opinion, this data is not very useful for you to remember. You just remember the headquarter, which is in India. So, that makes it all the more important, okay? Now, uh, the purpose of the Sikri set is to ensure a prosperous, food-secure, resilient dry land tropics, okay?
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर इज विच कंपनी है सक्सेसफुल रन दी वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट एयरक्राफ्ट इंजन ऑन हाइड्रोजन तो यार द राइट आंसर इज ट्रॉल्स रोएस विच इज अ ब्रिटेन बेस्ड कंपनी यूके कंपनी सो वॉट हैज हैपन्ड दैट एन एयरक्राफ्ट इंजन we all know that the engines need fuel so there is a specific aviation fuel that used to be used in the engines now this rolls royce had made a breakthrough in that industry it has run an engine aircraft engine we are talking about on hydrogen fuel and this is a step towards sustainable aviation fuel which the aviation industry aims to bring in okay so international civil aviation organization which is based in montreal canada has also focused on this sustainable aviation fuel and it aims to bring sustainable aviation fuel across the world and it aims to commercialize this fuel so that the entire aviation industry can be made green and net emission free so my question from all of you is you need to tell me by which year does the icao aims to make the aviation industry green or sustainable okay this is your task next question is who has been appointed as the md and ceo of bombay stock exchange so here sundaraman ramamurthy or sundaraman r is the right answer okay so i should have put the picture of sundaraman ramamurthy here but maine yahan pe bull laga diya okay so let's just ignore the bull as of now chaliye now as far as the news is concerned we have read it that the md and ceo of bombay stock exchange has been appointed which is sundaraman ramamurthy i want to discuss an uh, update about the bombay stock exchange as well so bsc i have already explained this in one of my previous classes that it is asia's oldest stock exchange and why would it not be because it is the first ever stock exchange that was established in the entire continent so it very well be the oldest stock exchange that is still in operation so bombay stock exchange is the first ever stock exchange which was established in 1875 and it was given the recognition under the securities contract regulation act of 1956 okay now if there is a question why uh is the recognition given after so many years so be mindful of the fact that this year india was a colony of uk okay and this is the independent india which is giving the uh recognition to bsc okay so do pay attention to these facts now something more about the bsc what it is doing as of now so sensex to aap sabko pata hoga it is an index given by the bsc on which we have a certain number of companies 30 listed companies if you track those companies you can buy and sell the securities uh bsc has one more thing that is india iix which is india's first international exchange set up by bsc in the ifsc that is international financial services authority okay located in ahmedabad gift city okay then we have indian clearing corporation limited as well which is a wholly owned subsidiary of bsc and since it is a clearing corporation so it uh, acts to clear the security receipts and whatever is the function as far as the clearing of receipts and payment is concerned okay the next point and this is guys the most important point that is the bsc has launched bsc sama samman okay so this bsc samman is a csr exchange we have heard about the csr trust csr funds csr companies but bsc has launched a csr exchange itself so what does this exchange do it basically connects the ngos with the businesses so that the ngos can raise capital from the businesses and the businesses can also fulfill their csr obligations so that is the basic premise of this bsc csr sorry bsc samman now on the similar concept we have a social stock exchange as well i hope you remember the concept of it so the social stock exchange aims to help the ngos or npos in raising the funds from the public okay by using 
their securities and listing them on this social stock exchange. Now, which committee was formed by SEBI for the social stock exchange? This is my question from all of you. You need to tell me in the comment section below. Okay. Question number six. Who is the chairperson of Airports Authority of India? So, here, Sanjeev Kumar is the right answer. <coughs> Okay, so November 28 to December 2nd was celebrated as the awareness, uh, Aviation Safety Awareness Week by the Airports Authority of India. And uh, that was the week. Now let's learn about the Airports Authority of India itself. So it is a Mini Ratna Category 1 company. It was established in 1995 and the entire uh, work or responsibility of creating the airport, airport infrastructure as well as regulating that is on the airport authority of India itself. Then it came into existence through the airports authority of India act of 1994. Thus it is a statutory body. So it is very hard to make change in the entire composition of this body. That is why I guess the certain bodies are created by statutes. Then we have the chairman which is Sanjeev Kumar. Okay. Now we are discussing about the Airports Authority of India. So I remember one scheme which it has launched very recently and it is operating it and it's a very important scheme. So the scheme is APSA. As venues for skilled artisans of the region. This is the full form of APSA. So in which the certain space at the international airports is given to the artisans so that they can exhibit their products. That is a scheme operate uh, implemented by the airports authority of india so do remember that fact as well coming back to question number seven where was the 2022 international media seminar on peace in the middle east organized so here right <coughs> geneva is the right answer so what happened on november 29 international day for uh, solidarity with the Palestinian people was observed and on the occasion of that day the international media seminar on peace in the Middle East was organized in Geneva, Switzerland by the UN. Okay, so that is the news. Now guys, we tend to hear about Israel a lot through the news but when it comes to Palestine we only get to hear about this country from the tragic news items. But today I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to tell you about this country as uh, it in its whole. Okay. So what this country is, what is its capital, what is the current situation and whatever is the thing that you need to know about this country. So let's quickly discuss about that. Only. So first of all, capital. So Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem is the claimed capital of Palestine and Israel also claims it and in uh, 2020 or I guess prior to that Trump came into the picture and he dis, uh, declared Jerusalem as the capital of Israel but still it is contested. Jerusalem is also claimed by the Palestine and it is claimed by the Israel as well. Now the administrative capital of Palestine is Ramallah and if you look at this name it is such a beautiful name it has Ram and Allah in its name. So that is the beauty of the capital of Palestine. However, it is not the acclaimed capital, it is the administrative center of this country. Claim to ye log abhi bhi Jerusalem ko hi karte hai. Now currency is Palestinian pound. And when did Israel came into picture? So it came into picture in 1948. When UK promised Jews that they are going to settle them in a country of their own. So you can see the picture of Palestine before 1948. So it was in 1946. You can clearly see. Okay, so this green portion is Palestine and the white dots are the Israel or Jewish settlements. Okay, then it increased after the UN plan of 1947. Uh, this much is the division that was decided by the UN for Israel and Palestine. Then between 1949 to 1967, this was the 
region of Israel and Palestine. Then in 2012, you can clearly see that Palestine is on the verge of decline or you can say it is going to diminish very soon if the current situation goes on. So that was the situation. Now if we look at the geography of Israel and Palestine. So first of all, look at the countries. So this is your Red Sea. This is Jordan. Jordan ke saath sabse zada border share hota hai Israel and West Bank, which is this area. Okay. Then we have Lebanon as well, with which Israel shares its border. And this is the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt. Okay. Iske saath bhi Israel and Palestine both share the border. If you can see the Gaza Strip here, so this is the Gaza Strip. This area, the West Bank, and this is Jordan, and this is Dead Sea. Okay, so this is the geographical location. Now, guys, this is Dead Sea, and there is a very interesting fact related to the Dead Sea, which is attached to its name itself. It is called Dead Sea, but do you know why is it called Dead Sea? The reason is that its water is so saline, it is 10 times saline than, more saline than the water of the ocean. So it is such a saline water that no animal, plant or any kind of species can survive in this water. That is why it is called Dead Sea. And because of so much salt presence in the water, the density of the water is very low, you can say. So the people cannot swim in the water. Okay. It's not low, it's higher because the Dead Sea is full of salt and it makes it very much denser and heavier, heavier than the fresh water. So there is no place for the person to survive. Density hi nahi hai uski ki wo aapko le sake ho, tumi kam nahi hai. If you swim in it, you will float very easily. So that was the interesting fact related to Dead Sea. Now, remember this thing that West Bank is attached to Dead Sea and this is the water body, only water body with which... Uh, uh, this West Bank is attached. Gaza Strip ki baat kare, so it is attached to Mediterranean Sea as well. Now coming to the question number 8. So what is the age limit for becoming eligible for the Maiden Sangeet Natak Academy Amrit Award? So here 75 years is the right answer. Now first of all, Sangeet Academy. Sangeet Natak Academy has announced this award and this is the first edition of this award. So this is very important. Now this award has been announced because we are celebrating the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsa. That is why the age limit is kept at 75. Okay. So all the performers or the artists who have not been given any recognition throughout their life, they are going to be recognized under this award. Okay. But their age should be 75 or above. Okay. Their age should be 75 or above to get the award okay and they should have done something big in their field okay that is the basic idea so 86 artists have been selected for this award this year now the names of these artists are not very important now one lakh rupee is given as prize in this uh, award and this fact is very important directly a question can be made on the amount as well because this is the first edition Question number nine, which word is chosen as the word of the year for 2022 by Mariam Webster? So this is, this dictionary has chosen gaslighting as its word of the year for 2022. Now what is gaslighting? Gaslighting is basically to make someone feel that they're, uh, they, to convince someone that they start doubting their own sanity. So that means gaslighting. Now this is one word, there is one more word related to this lighting only, that is moonlighting. If you have heard about it, then it's well and good. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you here only. So moonlighting, guys, is basically a term which is used for the employees who are working full time at one organization and in the night they are doing the another job and they have not informed about their second job to the full time employer. And because of this moonlighting, many employees were fired by Vipro and Infosys. Infosys, they to, I guess, 300 employees ko hi fire kar diya tha because of this moonlighting. 
So this term is also very important. Directly, the meaning of moonlighting can be asked in your English section or maybe in the GK section. We don't know what the examiner examiner can ask from you. Okay, so you should be prepared from all sides. So I hope you remember the gaslighting and moonlighting. Moonlighting would be news me tha. Okay, the question number ten is which company has launched India's first ever launch pad? Designed and operated by a private player. So here, Agnikul Cosmos is the right answer. So we all know that the government of India, ISRO specifically, is intent on bringing the private players into the space field because that would help in uh, help India not only financially, the government not only financially, but also it would help the space sector of India to stand it on its own feet. Okay. So this is the Agnikul, and uh, here you can clearly see the. Motto: Launch anywhere, anytime, affordably. So, Agnikul Cosmos aims to provide the launch services to the satellite makers, like ISRO does uh, to the different countries. Right now, ISRO provides the rocket and launch vehicles for launching of these satellites of many countries which do not have such facilities at their hometown. Okay. Now, coming back to the statement. So, here Agnikul has inaugurated the launch pad which is the first ever launch pad designed and operated by a private company at the satish dhawan space station in shri harikota andhra pradesh <coughs> so it has been developed by isro and in space okay so agnikul uh, asked for the help from isro and in space for establishing this facility so it is going to have two parts first is the launch pad okay from where the launches will be done and second is the control center because after launching any satellite or anything into the space it is very important that you keep surveillance of that object okay mangalyaan 2 sorry chandrayaan 2 b isliye fail hua tha that we lost connection with that so it is very important that control center be hona chahiye so on that note i would like to say goodbye to all of you thank you so much guys for watching the video in case you have any kind of feedback you can provide it to me in the comment section or on the whatsapp number of ours which is this okay goodbye guys have a good day